Okay, so today we're uh, going to be factoring. We're going to do a little review first of all the stuff we're supposed to know. You should be able to look at that graph and answer all of these questions. So I'm going to pause for a second and give you a chance to answer them, and then we'll come back and answer them. Okay, the x-intercepts, well, they're right here, and so it shouldn't be too hard to find them. Negative uh, 1 and 3, raise your hand if you had those right. Okay, good. Next thing is axis of symmetry, and that's that line that runs right along here. Assuming we're counting by 1s, which we were, then it's over one box, so it's x equals 1. The vertex, well, the vertex, I can see it. It's right there. I go over 1 and up 4, so it's 1 comma 4. Vertex form, once I have the vertex, vertex form is that kind where you have parentheses and it's squared, and the vertex is buried in it. It looks like that. I bet you a lot of you forgot that negative in front, though, didn't you? Be honest, how many of you forgot the negative? All right, it's about half of you. All right. And some of you notice it at least. It, the, since the parabola is upside down, it has to have a negative in front. That's the uh, up-down flip or the reflection over the x-axis. All right. Next, I would probably multiply this out to get general form. And those of you that forgot the negative before may have gotten this part wrong. Because when you multiply this all out, you get general form. And if without the negative, you wouldn't have it exactly right. But there it is. Raise your hand if you had that one right. All right, there's a few of you. Maybe it's just because you forgot how to get from vertex form to general. What do you do? Generally, you just multiply it out. Okay. Now, factored form, you can get this factored form right here by actually taking this and factoring it. That's what we're going to do today. But I bet some of you knew that since this was a negative 1 right here, that you needed to have something that would solve it, and you used positive 1 like that, so that x equals negative 1 solves it. And then the other one over here, which is x is 3, was going to solve this part, so you needed to make it a minus 3. And we're, those are getting the zeros, and so you want the opposite of whatever this number is. If this number is a 3 over here, then you use a minus 3 here, because 3 minus 3 will make it 0. And then the general form, oh, we already had that from multiplying. Once you have general form, it tells you the y-intercept right there because the y-intercept is where x is 0. So I stick in a 0 here and a 0 here, cancels out, and it says y equals 3. And that's coincidentally what's underneath the yellow box. All right. Do you feel like you understand those things? Okay, good. Then you're ready to do this part where we get, we have general form, and we go from here to the factored form, which is, oh, deleted the wrong thing there. Hold on. Which is this one. So we need to go from here to here without a picture, without a graph. All right. So this is where we've come from and where we're going. So far, we've done vertex to general, which is this kind is vertex, going to this kind is general, and generally you just multiply it out. And we've gone from factored form to general form. And generally, you just multiply it out. Okay, so just I'm trying to pound that into your head that when you see general form, it's generally just multiply. But now, we're going to start with general and get factored form. And that's just factoring. And after that, like the next day, uh, a couple days from now, actually, we're going to go from this form to this form. And that's the hardest, going from general form to vertex form over here. And to do that, we complete the square for the vertex. When you complete the square, you'll get the vertex form. And I'll teach you how to do that about two days from now. Okay. For this, I know these are easy to do in your head. Just do a use, use FOIL or whatever method you want and answer those four questions really quick. Just kind of fire them off. You don't have to even write the original problem down. Just write down the answers for those four. And we'll see if we can learn something from the pattern. I'll pause while you do that. After a while, I bet you weren't even using FOIL, were you? You can use FOIL for all of them, but after a while, you start figuring out the pattern. You go, well, first is x squared. Didn't you always start with x squared? Yeah. yeah. And then you do the outside and the inside, and yes, I can go, this is 4x and this is 3x, but in the end, I'm just going to add those two numbers, right? And so that makes 7x. So I can just look at the 4 and the 3 and go, oh, it's got to be 7, and then you just got to remember to put an x on it. And then the lasts, 
is this and this, and that's going to be negative 12. And I'm, you're right. <laughs> when I drew this red line through it, it like crossed off part of the positive. I couldn't see it anymore. That's my excuse. <laughs> Looked like a negative for a second. Sorry. There. Okay. This one, same idea. I just go, well, I know it starts with x squared, and then I add these together, and it makes plus x, and then I multiply at the end, and it makes minus 12. And then I go x squared, and then I add them. What's it make? Minus x, and then I multiply them. Negative 12. So you do a lot of adding and then multiplying, right? Let's add them. What do you get? Negative 7x, and then multiply them. Positive 12. Well, what you just did is like unfactoring. These were factored, right? And you multiplied them out and got general form. So that's like unfactoring. You're doing the opposite thing. So what you got to learn how to do today is take these as the problems and then make these little answers. I know you've done this. You've done this in algebra before. If the problem says x squared plus x minus 12, you'll have to come up with that for an answer. If the problem says x squared minus x minus 12, come up with that for an answer. And let me arrange this last one. Okay. So the red ones will be the problems today, and the black ones will be the answers today. They will get more complicated, of course. One that I want to point out here, in fact, two that I want to point out here. These guys bring up an interesting pattern. Look at the answers that are in black. Do you see how they're kind of the same, but they're kind of different? What's the only difference? The signs have been exactly switched. What was negative became positive, what was positive became negative. And notice that the end is the same. The only difference is that the middle has the opposite sign as each other. The moral of the story is, is this. When you are factoring, if you ever get an answer for the middle term that's exactly the opposite of what you wanted, like it comes out negative 7 and you wanted it to be positive 7, then you're really close. And all you've got to do is switch the two signs to be the opposite of what they were. Switch the minus to a plus and switch the plus to a minus. And then you'll get the exact opposite middle term. All right. This is the mathy way to say this. We're, we are taking general form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and changing it into this format. And I think the teacher used r for a reason. Why do you think they used r for that? What, is r, what could r stand for that kind of goes in those areas? The roots. You got it. Okay. And then... They're saying that they have to multiply to be the C term, so they multiply to be that, and they add up to be this, and this is going to give us, or we're going to start by finding the factors of C. The things that multiply to make this are what we start with. Now this only works, the whole little trick of they multiply to this and they add to that, that only works if A is 1. A has to be a 1. In other words, you can't have any other number here like 6. If you use a number like that, we have a whole different way of factoring that we've got to use. All right. So here's a typical factoring question. And again, this is a review for you, I hope. But the first thought should be, what multiplies to make what? Negative 18. So I've got some ideas. By the way, I think a 9 times 2. But remember... If it's negative here, one of these two has to be negative. Now, how will I know? Well, I just got to try it. Now, remember what I was saying about how if you multiply it out and you get the opposite of what you wanted, then what do you have to do? Switch the signs. If I multiply this out, I get x squared and then minus 9x and plus 2 makes minus 7x, and then the last give me minus 18. I got the exact opposite of one in the middle. Therefore, I just switch the signs. So I know my numbers are in the right spot and everything. And all i got to do is change that and that around. Get the idea? 
All right. What if you had started with 18 times 1? Well, you just try it and you see if it works and it doesn't work. One of them have to be negative. Maybe you switch it around, make this one negative and this one positive. Still doesn't work. Wouldn't even need to do that because if you switch the signs, the only way that's going to work is if the number was exactly right except opposite. Just went over. Actually, no. 